Carol von Wolfen. <coughs> uh, I write books. Professor Hamada, I want to ask you a question about not what is happening, but what is not happening. Uh, I think that uh, you also uh, think that the monetary policy is okay, it's a good beginning, but fiscal policy leaves a great deal to be desired. And I have long, worried, long wondered why there is not a choice for an obvious policy that would help greatly and that's a housing policy aimed at the expansion of existing living space for ordinary Japanese and the addition, of course, of new homes. A housing policy would obviously be good for the construction company, it would give them something to do besides spoiling the Japanese countryside with unnecessary bridges and, and uh, tunnels and all that. It would also create new space for consumer goods, it would be a tremendous uh, boost for, the, uh, for consumer spending. And it perhaps also would do something to turn around the so-called birth strike, the unwillingness of a majority of Japanese women, even married women, to, uh, you know, to have, to look after a next generation. So why does that not happen? Now, if you tell me that there are social reasons or regulatory reasons, I won't believe you. There is some, something has to do, there's an obstacle to the imagination here bureaucratic imagination or political imagination. Could you comment on any of this? Uh, I feel honored to be asked by a famous author. And I enjoyed your me many times. But uh, I have a somewhat different opinion about the importance of fiscal and monetary policy. First, uh, Japan was suffering from deflation. Still, an um, inflation expectation hard to create. So the money is related. That is the bread and butter knowledge of economics. I want to, you to learn that uh, monetary policy is very important. Secondly, fiscal policy expenditures do many good things, but at the same time it increases the bureaucracy's power. The old industrial policy of Japan that might have worked chose Bureaucrats chose the right industry and they gave them money or support. Sometimes cooperation was useful. But at the end, uh, bureaucrats end up in parachuting to some industrial association there and so. So there are so many ways by the fact that in public sectors, people are not motivated by market mechanism, by power or just uh, authority makes it uh, more important. But I agree that there are, uh, that is my main reply, but uh, I quite agree there are many problems like housing, in Japan, or so that could be improved uh, the nature, the quality of life. But I don't know. I heard that because of uh, Japan's economic stagnation and power overly intervention into the private sectors. Many guys are leaving Tokyo. They moved to Singapore. They moved to Hong Kong. And housing market in Japan, in Tokyo, is not yet recovered fully, particularly for high-quality high housing market. Uh, 
<coughs> Anthony Rowley, Singapore Business Times. Um, it was always obvious, I think, that the first two arrows were going to have a fairly ra rapid effect, whereas the third arrow, as I think you said yourself, um, structural reform takes five years, ten years, or whatever. So do you think the first two arrows were overemphasized, uh, in, in other words, applied too quickly, and they created um, expectations that couldn't be fulfilled? And your in table here is very interesting, the deflation gap. I mean, obviously, um, the deflation gap was closing and almost closed. And unless the, if the consumption tax had not been increased, presumably Japan would have been in a state of quite strong inflation at the moment. So was the, were Abenomics properly sequenced, do you think, or should the first two arrows have been weaker? <laughs> I disagree with you in the sense that the inflation didn't come after this uh, first part of this graph. It was over 1.1 or 2. So for some years, it's OK. It's not after the pullback uh, that inflation came. So I, I would rather say the third arrow is grossly, if not grossly, uh, overemphasized by now. Look at Takenaka Koizumi reform. The, that were a very excellent attempt, and they did it seriously. But they couldn't persuade the Bank of Japan to do the demand policy. So that lifting up this red line more does not mean to hum uh, the life of people at all until demand is fully implemented. So. That's uh, Paul Krugman wrote recently on the newspaper that uh, those people who try to mention structural reform, that is, of course, important, I agree, but they try to, if not minimize, uh, reduce the importance of the first and second dollar. For example, Mr. Hayakawa of uh, Fuji Institute, who came from uh, director of the Bank of Japan, already starting its already that ceiling is over there. So we should reduce monetary policy impact stimulus right now. And this is he is advocating that we should return to Mr. Shirakawa's age, again, dark age, or I would say where the captain couldn't see any sunshine, like in Wagner's Free and then uh, Holland, or, or Flying Dutchman. So that your suggestion is like that, and uh, I sh don't want Japanese war voters run from that. Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. I'm Roy Lockheimer, an old time member and feeling very old today of this, uh, of this <laughs> club. Around the time that you went to Yale, I became a member of this club. So it's uh, maybe too long. But let me ask you, in those days, the economists that we read, international economists, were all like uh, Kindleberger and Hom and Rosowski, Okawa, and so on, were talking against economic nationalism. But your policies, if they're yours, seem to be supporting economic nationalism, competitive devaluation. The yen went from a glorious 79 yen to the dollar to now a basement 118. So the Japanese public has lost a great deal of wealth. Are these really the policies that you wanted? Competitive devaluation? Thank you. You, uh, you mentioned nostalgic names to me, in addition to J Jim Tobin, uh, Kinderberger, and Mr. Okawa, uh, who uh, I respected and uh, who gave me, in various forms, great education in different, uh, in 
each different way. Uh, but competitive devaluation is my subject. Uh, actually, I was known as an economist because I advocated policy coordinations among uh, countries under the fixed exchange rate. But the situation changes now. It is a flexible exchange rate. And under the flexible exchange rate, each country can undo other countries, sometimes bad, sometimes good, influences. So the fault of Shirakawa was not uh, was uh, mainly that he didn't disengage the effect of the huge monetary expansion in the part of the US and the UK. So the Japan was not in the epicenter, but the wave, large wave came as Endaka. And he couldn't get rid of it. That's made this picture. So under the flexible exchange rate, it is possible for each national central bank, if they were clever enough, to disengage bad uh, firms. So let the laissez-faire, in my, one of my papers, I proved that laissez-faire is the best policy for each country and uh, most circumstances. But uh, there are, of course, caveats. For European countries, you cannot do monetary ease or monetary construction so easily. You have to cooperate with you, uh, European Central Bank. And the European Central Bank, today we talked about, is, uh, if not dominated, but strongly influenced by the philosophy of German, or philo uh, interest of German people. And that makes it, they have two hurdles. One is uh, to understand monetary policy is necessary, but each country doesn't have the, because they don't have their own money, they have to ask the ECB, but the ECB is governed by more conservative monetary policy people. So you cannot do in the double negative sense, so the double sense uh, to do this monetary policy. So for the country that are governed by some kind of fixed exchange rate, like Euro, your comment is right that currency devaluation of a single country may have significant effect on the other country. That's true. My name is Baumgartner. I'm working for Swiss Television. What do you expect from Mr. Abe after the elections in terms of uh, structural reforms? What are you telling him? What, what do you want him to do? You will always grade this uh, structural reform E on, on your, on your uh, own scale. And uh, do you think the bureaucracy will let him do uh, the necessary reforms. The campaign against the, no, campaign for uh, consumption tax hikes engineered mainly by Ministry of Finance and uh, also substantially by the Prime Minister uh, that the Cabinet of was uh, first considered to be the norm rather than exception. Always, if the MOF says something, then the politician will follow. But it didn't uh, like this. Even though I think it was a good thing to 
to to have taken off that uh, special clause for business cycle considerations because otherwise Japan needs government look like a very weak-minded entity not to do the right thing but this time mm, the Minister of Finance opinions are rejected by the Prime Minister and the main part of the cabinet so uh, I think there is some hope but uh, unless Mr. Abe will make a landslide victory political capital he can use to cope with his all political resistance are limited so if uh, I don't have chance to talk to uh, national voters but uh, it is not the question that Abe policy is right or not, but uh, in order to accomplish the right policy, the Abe government needs stronger support from the public. And as follow up, in as follow up question, what would you advise as yeah first next steps? If he gets uh, a big majority again, what would you advise him to do first? I see. Uh, if I, I, you government? I don't know. Uh, there are four or three or four things that TPP, labor policy, deregulation policy, corporate tax reduction, all are important. Whatever you. Uh, the government can do should be done quickly. For example, Japanese corporate tax is uh, 35 percent. American tax rate is maybe slightly higher in some places. And uh, I had uh, I, I come back later, but in that kind of case, just reduction of 1% or 2% that Mr. Aso is saying is very, very lukewarm. So it should go to 25% in the second year or something. Otherwise, you cannot win the competition of lowering tax. It's like Japanese folklore. There is a folklore called uh, Hotal Koi. Hotel is a light one. Um, this water is sweet. Uh, the next water is bitter. So why don't you come to this water pond and write it? Like us, that kind of situation. So you, uh, there are competition between many countries to reduce the corporate tax. But the Japanese uh, tax bureau is always considering the tax calculation, assuming the pool of tax is uh, constant. So the, the Ministry of Finance doesn't understand economics or even arithmetics that uh, tax revenues are the multiple of product of tax rate and uh, the pool of tax revenue. And the pool of tax revenue is very flexible. If you strategically reduce the tax below the other countries. And of course, there are many technicalities. If uh, what happens if other countries follow again, then the corporate tax seeds will become zero eventually, or if there are uh, double taxation relief, then this kind of effect should be modified. But basically, corporate tax, but bold corporate tax reduction is crucial, and not piecemeal reduction of corporate taxes.
people are Professor Hamada, uh, Teddy Jimbo with the video news. Um, obviously, uh, to bring up the uh, bring about the uh, real economic growth, you need a structural uh, uh, reforms. And my question is this: um, I'd like to ask you downs the possible downside of the abenomics if uh, the government fails to realize imp implement the uh, structural uh, reforms. Uh, what would happen if uh, you obviously can't just keep printing more and more money uh, without any uh, structural uh, reforms? So what, what kind of effect would it have if uh, government continues this current pace of uh, you know, financial easing and at the same time the uh, structural reforms didn't, uh, didn't come through? And what is the time uh, allowed for the government to uh, implement the uh, structural uh, reforms uh, while abenomics uh, does ha still have the power? Uh, first of all, uh, we have to keep continuing demand policy until we are sure that this uh, ceiling is uh, satisfied. If you stop, like Mr. Hayakawa insists, then Japanese, the whole structure of abenomics is, uh, will be collapsing. Maybe it's a good to omen for opposition parties, but uh, f not for the Japanese uh, nationals. And uh, if we don't do any structural reform, that uh, negative side of this is this uh, potential GDP doesn't go any more than the present situation. And it is not very optimistic picture. The, the potential growth rate of Japan is at most 1% also. So. so comparing with China or the glorious time of Japanese economic growth, uh, which Professor Okawa was studying, it is a pessimistic picture. So we need uh, this uh, structural reform to increase women's labor. That means about 10% of women's laborers are still idle from other countries' standpoint. <coughs> from Korean standpoint, about the same thing. So 5% of population can come into the workplace in five years. That means this 1% <coughs> supply <coughs> constraints will be relaxed, nearly 1%. So, so it is, even though it is not the per permanent solution, it is uh, very helpful. So uh, unless we do deregulation, that will uh, create lots of efficiencies, I think. That will take off hurdles to obstacles to efficiencies. So this uh, is a better picture, but uh, whether Mr. Abe has, we may provide more knowledge about that, but uh, whether he has a political, I think guts will he has, but uh, whether he can have the environment to co implement every bit of structural reform policy. But uh, Mr. Suga and Abe are determined. So I hope uh, at least a substantial part of it will be done. And the number of legislations, I don't have the number, but uh, passed for structural reform during the last diet or so statistically larger, much larger than other administrations. So there are uh, hope. But uh, I think many should share some pain. Uh, consumers already share the burden of consumption tax to some extent. And politicians should be fair to the number, shoulder number type of system and bureaucrats of course uh, should uh, accept 
the reform <coughs> and so forth. And uh, firms, uh, business associations are very glad when I say consumption tax reduction, but they don't want to give up some of the special tax measures that create some benefit. Or newspaper would like to have uh, this uh, reduced tax rate, Kagan Zeritz, and I don't know whether it, if newspaper is a little cheaper, that will help to the equality of income in Japanese population. <laughs> said uh, in Germany we have reduced the tax rate for newspapers it doesn't help much <laughs> at least not the newspapers okay yeah I open the floor now also for associate members here yeah, please Professor Hamad, uh, um, Makoto Honjo Associate. Uh, Professor Hamad, I'm, I'd like to sort of uh, tag on to the earlier question of, who, and first of all, I'm a businessman, and so therefore, businessman always tries to think of what if scenarios and uh, plan Bs, and what if Abenomics doesn't work or is sort of torpedoed by some reason? Are we going to be ending up with a lot of inflation? Uh, because of the uh, huge increase in the balance sheet of the Bank of Japan. That's my first sort of a tier question. The second tier is um, you mentioned that immigration is going to be very important. However, for instance, even uh, your colleague, uh, Professor Honda, is very anti-immigration. And uh, how would you sort of like to translate that dichotomy within the sort of Abenomics camp or the Ab advisors camp uh, in bringing about change to Japan? The latter question, uh, Mr. Abe sits and quite listen to sometimes conflicting opinions and he will decide at the last moment. He doesn't comment on our ideas. Uh, I, I think like nuclear genera electric generation program, there are division of uh, interests among people whether we should liberalize more of migration or not and so forth. So we have uh, good uh, vague I would say as a Japanese, uh, good ethnic culture and so forth. On the other hand, we need more workers to come in. And uh, in Taiwan, uh, I visited last week, they said they introduced more Vietnamese people. And because of Vietnamese tradition and uh, Chinese tradition in Taiwan, uh, we, it didn't have uh, so much problem. But in the case of Japan, uh, some of the ethnic problems occurs in Okinawa, for example. So th it's uh, not so simple. So th I think this needs a long process of uh, discussion and sort of experiments to make uh, Japan compatible with increasing number of workers, but still keeping some of the present nature of uh, human interactions in Japan. So, th but that is uh, difficult process, I think. And inflation, uh, we don't need to worry about inflation right now. There is always a, uh, always a danger. The worst thing that would happen with money is that the money we have will reduce values 
every time and that's inflation. So it is important since government wants to use more resources. So there are in many historical circumstances inflation is an important danger. But in the right now, in the culture of Japan, the tradition of the Bank of Japan or success of the Bank of Japan to keep price level low was so long and so embedded in people and in the mind of economists, scholarly or business economists. So I don't think immediate danger is not inflation. If economic collapses, next come will be the return to the Shirakawa age. And okay, last question, I think. Uh, now, uh, it's already reached our time. So I would like to end quite soon. My name is Takeshi Ito. I'm an associate member. Uh, I have raised this uh, question with a number of influential economists, but they all seem to deny its existence, no any knowledge of this, and this is about helicopter money. Um, I think that the former UK uh, FSA chairman, uh, Lord Adair Turner, is a proponent of helicopter money, whereby the, the Bank of Japan or the central bank will just continue to underwrite government deficits. And in the case of Japan, uh, he's saying that there's no way ever in the foreseeable future that the, the Japanese government will be able to reduce its deficits. It will only continue to grow. Uh, and I think based on what your lecture today too, uh, the process is going to take a long time with 1% real growth. Uh, it will be a long, long time uh, and there's no hope that the, uh, the government's goal to uh, reach a primary balance by 2020 2020 is ever feasible. So I like to ask this question because I have raised it a number of times, but everyone seems to deny or have any knowledge of this. Uh, probably I share uh, with some other experts to not able to answer too directly, but if you think the national economy. There are two ways of thinking the government, private sector, and the central bank. One way of thinking the national economy is that central banks and the government are, after all, the same kind of thing outside the private economy. So we have to think of the combined government and the central bank versus private sector. And I think that is one of the trend of economics, macroeconomic theory. And for considering this, uh, it gives some guide. If you money is scarce, we'd like to increase money. But there are many ways you may distribute by helicopter money. Or in the present case, they exchanges, exchanges government debt with money. Bank of Japan buys and sells. But if you consolidate the government, it doesn't make very much sense that money just goes out. Or you, so helicopter money and uh, normal way of expanding money through market operations are not so much different. And if uh, that is needed, we should do it. And if it's overly done, then we will have inflation. And other things I cannot get into. There are technical matters whether you should do but create money by buying goods or buying securities, government securities. And it has 
different aspect, uh, impact on asset market like JGE uh, bond, JEB market and so forth. But uh, drastic buying helicopter money or pyramid money, you build pyramid that government spends and <coughs> that is financed by central bank that Keynes might have said is another way and uh, it's interesting for theoreticians like me to consider the difference and similarity of these things but uh, the basic thing for our <coughs> life is not money but what uh, we can eat what we can <coughs> enjoy so the monetary policy should be conducted to use the full capacity we have. But at the same time, if you hold money, money shouldn't decrease value every instant or so. That might have it really happened in Germany a long time ago. OK. I would like to close the session today. Thank you very much, Professor Hamada. And as it is custom in our club, we also have prepared a one-year honorary guest membership. Thank you very much. And uh, we hope that you come back before that to yes. have coffee with us or a beer. And maybe hopefully later uh, next year um, to talk with uh, uh, us about uh, economic policies again. Thank you yes, very much. Last year I got many reactions from talking here. And I really appreciate your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.